Welcome to Travel Chat. This week, I chatted with one of my friends and colleagues, Cassandra, who recently returned from a romantic getaway at Disney's Coronado Springs Resort. Let's hear what she has to say about her experience. Hi, Cassandra. How are you, my friend? Good, Jenny. How are you? I'm great. I'm always so excited to get to chat with you about your trips to Disney World. And I know you just got back from a trip with your husband. I think you were just got back last week, right? The end of last week? About 48 hours ago. Oh my goodness. So <laughs> I got you right away. You got me fresh. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. And I noticed that behind you, you have the beautiful Coronado Springs. Yes, that is the lovely Grand Destino Tower behind me, um, decked out in holiday colors because they changed the lighting. So it's red and green up lighting and it it is just a beautiful thing to look at. And that is from the back side of the building. And they actually have the same thing on the front side of the building as you're driving in. Oh, so nice. So that's... We got in late. We were like, oh, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the side that overlooks the lake, right? Yes. The, the yeah. back side of mm -hmm. so beautiful. So tell me a little bit about your stay there. Cause I, I haven't stayed at uh, Coronado Springs in quite a few years and definitely not since the tower. Uh, came in, although I'm really excited. We'll, we'll both be staying at Coronado again in, in April for our agency event. So tell me a little bit about the resort and how it's looking and, and how your stay was there. So we had an absolutely fantastic time. Now I have stayed at the Coronado a few times. I've stayed way back when, before it was um, updated. Mm -hmm. I stayed once when I took my youngest son for a mom and son trip. Um, when the rooms were recently renovated. I stayed when we had a conference there last year, I think our company conference, and that time I stayed in the Grand Destino Tower. And this time I stayed in the regular resort. Um, and much to my chagrin in a standard view room, which when you're coming in off of a plane late at night and you have to drag your bags by yourself all the way across, <laughs> <laughs> Two choice words were ex 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 exemplified, um, but uh, after after being there a day, I realized it was absolutely the best location for us to be in, and it was a standard location, so that kind of really surprised me, but um, everything was just lovely. I mean, besides the fact that it was decorated beyond, you know, it was very tastefully decorated for the holidays. Um, a lot of uplighting, a lot of trees at locations, the main lobby that you come into in Grand Destino Tower. I mean, it rivals, you know, some five-star resorts. It really is just that spectacular. And the entire time, my husband's like, I cannot believe that this is a moderate resort. He was blown away by that fact. So um, it's, I, I, I stayed at probably every resort, every resort. <laughs> I, I must want dessert this morning. <laughs> I stayed at every resort on Disney property, and I'm really liking this one right now for, for families, for adults, for couples. There's just a lot to offer from every, for everyone. So tell me a little bit about the rooms, uh, the renovated rooms in, the, in uh, the original part of the building, because I haven't been in the, the new renovated rooms. Okay. Um, they're beautiful. So you walk right in, you have hardwood floors, um, very clean, modern sort of vibe to it. Uh, lots of wood, woodsy tones. Um, nice. The beds are super because they're elevated so that you can actually slide your luggage underneath it and they're platform beds. Yep. Um, the area where uh, you would put like all of your drawers and stuff like that has a really long counter. Um, See so a lot of storage stuff on there. Beautiful big like flat screen TV. It must have been like a 60 or 70 inch flat screen TV. Um, each room had a Keurig in it, which was really nice. So, um, and then a hidden refrigerator. The bathroom area was, oh my gosh, I want to do my own bathroom over like that. <laughs> so lots of build-ins, cubbies, um, Lots of different drawers, a whole wall of mirrors with like building stuff. They had the makeup mirror with the lighted makeup mirror and stuff on the wall. Um, so that's one section. The new thing that they did is if you're familiar with moderate resorts at all, they sort of had a dressing area, so to speak, where the sink is. And then the, the, the commode and the 
shower tub or in a separate area. Right. Well, you used to pull like a curtain over. Yeah, I, I remember pulling the curtain. Yeah. Now you have beautiful barn doors that slide closed. So it really, really gives you that sort of separation of space type of deal. Gotcha. Um, and then the shower itself was great. It was a uh, rainforest shower with a separate shower, takeoff shower head. So nice. that was really nice as well. So you really felt that it was upgraded, the seamless glass doors. Mm -hmm. um, they had the, the Disney, the H2O products, the really nice yeah. products that they, so those were there, you know, mounted so you could use them, stuff like that. So it was, it was really, really nice. I was very pleased with the room. That's great. Now, how about the dining? Did you experience any of um, the newer restaurants or the older? Uh, you know, I can't think off the top of my head which restaurants are open there, but um, there's quite a few dining options now with yes. this hour. Yes. So what's really great about the setup is that there's this big glorious lake, as you can see in the background, um, and they've built a bridge or basically a boardwalk. Um, like a three point boardwalk type of section. So there's a boardwalk that takes you from like the main sort of lobby area of the resort over to the side, the standard room side. And then there's another section that takes you directly, it's like three points they meet in the center. And then another bridge takes you directly over to the pool area. Whereas before you'd have to like traverse the entire property and walk all the way around. Right, right. Now you just utilize this bridge and it gets you easily from one location to the other. Um, the dining, not all the dining was open, but what was open was really good. And remember that Coronado is also a conference center. So it is geared a little more towards an adult vibe, I think which since this was a couple's trip for my husband and I, first time ever, um, which is really fun, um, <laughs> we really appreciated that fact. So the uh, Rick's Lounge, R-I-X, was open for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Um, you, you needed to make a reservation, but they were allowing walk-ups as well. Um, the standard sort of uh, quick service buffet type of location is currently closed. Mm -hmm. because is that the there. pepper market? The pepper market, yes. Yeah. So that's closed. Yeah. Um, they had the new location that we loved, we dined at a couple times, is called the Three Bridges. Mm -hmm. And it's right on the water. And yeah. they have, it's all open air. You almost felt like you were either in Mexico or Hawaii. It was just that beautiful a setting really awesome huge bar in the center with filled with um tvs all around the ceilings you know with all different shows that they had on beautiful at one end massive fireplace um that had all stacked candles all over it lit so really a nice vibe and then one section had all sort of like couch seating and lounge seating with small tables so you really could sit back and share an evening with friends and and you know have cocktails and stuff um they had a full menu which was delicious we ate there twice um they had my new favorite thing which was called a sangria flight which was oh, I saw those you see that i did that twice by myself <laughs> and enjoyed every last drop. Um, so it was a tower, like this iron tower that had four like prongs on it and there were four wine glasses and each one was filled with a different style of sangria with a piece of fruit as an accent. Mm -hmm. um, so that was, that was really what fun. What was your favorite? Which was your favorite? You know, I did not know the names of it. It just, it was the one that had the strawberry in it. Okay. So whatever that is. <laughs> That's good enough for me. Enough. Um, but it was delicious, but they had like tapas and they had other appetizers and they had, um, charcuterie trays, which, which I love because it gives a little taste of everything. So that bar is actually open. It opens at four and it closes at midnight. So we were able to sort of, for lack of a better terminology, bar hop on <laughs> property because, um, we went to the top of Grand Destino Tower. Um, the restaurant there is currently closed, which we dined at last year. Remember, I 
I cannot think of the name of it, but it's a beautiful new one that's on the roof. Yes. So that's closed. Mm -hmm. But the Dahlia Lounge on the other side is open. Um, they serve a light breakfast there until about 1030. And then they open in the afternoon and then they close at midnight. And that is a beautiful location because it's um, at the top of the building, 16 floors up and they have a beautiful outdoor terrace again okay. filled with sofas mm -hmm. and lounging chairs and high top bar tables so you could sit there look out and you could look over and see star wars land in the distance oh wow, yeah so you could you know you got an idea of different things you saw some of the water parks and stuff again a really extensive um appetizer menu tapas uh, drink menu and stuff like that. Beautiful indoor bar as well. So it's reminded me a lot of the California Grill oh. bar area, but just instead of being in the center of the restaurant, it was on the outskirts. So you had all the outdoor viewing area as well. Um, so those were a couple of the places that we dined at that were open. They also had dining at the pool area. So that was open as well. Um, we didn't take advantage of that because it was raining a little bit, but mm -hmm. we still went over and sat in the pool and hot tub. So that was nice. Good. So Coronado's really always stood out to me for having so many different dining options. And now with Tower, we have even more, which I just think none of the other moderate resorts, which I love the other moderate, so I'm not trying to put them down, but I do think that this moderate resort, it's almost, I've heard people refer to it as like a moderate plus kind of yeah. in the way that art of animation is kind of like a value plus. Yes. Right? Yeah. So it is a moderate resort, but that tower, I mean, is practically oh. a deluxe resort um, in itself. Absolutely. And yep. I love that you have full access to everything, whether you stay mm -hmm. in the tower or you stay in a standard room. Yes. Yeah. It was, I mean, it was super great because you really felt like you were two different locations, but you were still on the same property and still had all of the same experiences, you and know, amenities. And, and, amenities. Yeah. Um, and I will say, you know, we, where you're situated there, your access to the parks is by a bus. I found the buses to be very reliable. Um, there are bus stations throughout, so there's different zones where you would go to a different bus stand number and wait for the buses. And it was, you know, really no more than a five minute walk from your room. And again, I stayed in a standard, standard room and I only had a five minute walk to the bus. So um, very easily, easily accessible to, to get around. That's awesome. That's so important. I'm going to ask you about that. For you. you covered my I covered that. question about the transportation. <laughs> I think that's the number one question, especially for the resorts that don't have alternative like boat, monorail, gondola. Um, everyone's always worried about the buses, but it seems like they've been doing a great job with the buses. Yeah, great job. And, it, you know, it came, it came by very often. We didn't really have to wait more than maybe, I don't know, seven minutes one day. That, that was it. So that's not, that's not bad at all. And they're covered pavilions. So it's not like you're standing out in the direct sunlight. So yeah. So that was really helpful as well. And you can, you know, if you wanted to, suppose you wanted to come back from the parks, but you weren't necessarily ready to go, you know, and end your day. And of course, this is for the, for the adult members out there. You can, you can get off at zone one, which is the Grand Destino Tower, and you can go in and sit down and hang out in the lobby because the lobby is beautiful. It's a multi-storied lobby um, area with, again, sofas and lounging and stuff like that. A lot of people like to take a lot of siestas, I think, in the Coronado because they prevent you, present you with a lot of locations. Um, but you could go back, get off in zone one, go right in and go right on up to that Dahlia Lounge and then, you know, have a nice little cocktail for the end of the day. That's great. I can't wait to stay there in April. Yeah. I, I was not at the last agency event. Okay. Uh, I, I was at the first part on the cruise and then I didn't get to do the Disney part. Okay. So I have not stayed, I have not even stepped foot in that tower yet. And I'm so, oh, really, I'm so wait, excited. Wait till you see it. It is, it is stunning. It really is right. stunning. I can't wait. Uh, another really important thing that I wanted to mention is that the room itself is filled with USB ports and outlets. Um, 
I think we counted, and I could be wrong, but it could have either been 14 or 21 or somewhere around that vicinity of, of, of outlets that you can use to plug in your portable devices. So, you know, if you're a family of four, you can plug in your phone, your iPad, your laptop, and still everybody would be covered. So I thought that was really a key important thing that I really liked about it. Um, and then the other neat thing that they had is in the bed frame itself on the mountain on the wall was a little flashlight that you could flip up and it was at like a night light or reading light. Type oh, of nice. So I really, I thought that was, that was fun. So, you know, my better half wanted to go to bed. I could flip the light on and read my book. Gotcha. They think of everything. They do. They really do. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for sharing your experience and uh, all your pictures. And it's just always so fun to chat with you about Disney. Oh, thank you. I, I enjoy it. It brings, it brings out the kid in everybody. And uh, if 2020 has, not, has, has taught us one thing, it's that we all need to be a kid again and find some magic in our life. So you know, we did a very quick three, three day, three night, four day getaway. Um, and we were able to cover it all. So, you know, if you feel that you need to, to regroup, you know, Disney for adults, there's, there's really no better place. I agree. I love Disney for adults. Disney for adults. That could, <laughs> that could be a whole new line. <laughs> really could. <laughs> Adulting Disney style. There we go. There we go. It's I find life. it. Copyright Disney. Copyright. <laughs> you heard it right here. <laughs> I'll oh. give you my routing number and my bank account. <laughs> All right. I love it. I'll talk to you later. Thanks, Cassandra. Thank you so much for having me. All Have right. a great day. You too. Bye. Bye. Thank you, Cassandra, for sharing your thoughts about Disney's Coronado Springs Resort. And thanks to all of you for taking the time to check out this week's Travel Chat. We're excited to bring you information and updates as more destinations continue to welcome back travelers.